Hello guys, time for another reaction of this My Little Pony fanfic reading called Unmarked Chapter 1 My Little Pony Dark Mystery Fanfic Reading by Sparrow This be interesting because I was some way, shape or form was part of the story and it's 11 minutes and 40 seconds long. Let's get this reaction started in 3, 2, 1, go. That music. Wow. Sparrow presents. Ooh, that bass. Wow. Papa Bloom stood within a dark room where she could hear the sound of a pony struggling in the restraints that, that held the room against fuck. the table. <laughs> the room was lit only by a single fluorescent light bulb, hanging from the ceiling by only a single thread of wire, creating a gloomy atmosphere. It was only fitting due to what was about to happen next. Apple Bloom noticed two other shadowy figures move further into the dim light, oh, recognizing them as her two friends, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo. Sweetie Belle was holding a long, sharp butcher knife with her magic, while Scootaloo accompanied her with a kit that Sweetie had borrowed from her older sister. In the kit was threads, needles, and some tongs like to cut she was about bit. to cut. But what the fuck Apple is that? Apple Bloom wasn't wow. a stranger to this sight. The group of fillies had been doing these acts for weeks, yet no pony suspected them, seeing they were young and looked innocent, but were far from it. Apple Bloom started to build up a sweat as Sweetie Belle approached the right flank area of the pony. Apple Bloom stood in fear, hearing the pony and the restraints start to cry. Scootaloo quickly silenced the victim with a slap. Quiet down! Or I'll give you a reason to cry! Fucking hell! The victim didn't respond, only gave her a nod, due to their mouth being covered by duct tape, unable to speak. Just that like countless times now before, Sweetie Belle carefully cut into the light plane, immediately causing the pony to shake uncontrollably. Sweetie Belle ignored the pony struggles and cut along the cutie mark, one which Apple Bloom did not recognize. Wow. The sound of the flesh being cut made Apple Bloom cringe, hearing the pony's desperate screams for help, but no pony could hear the helpless pony. Sweetie Belle continued to carefully cut around the cutie mark, the flesh starting to dangle from the flank, flogging like Pegasus' wings each Fuck time Sweetie Belle managed to puncture a nerve. Blood had started to leak onto the floor, but no pony ever came into the room that these acts were done in. It was strictly forbidden, unless you were a cutie mark crusader. Sweetie had finished the cutting, hearing the chunk of freshly cut flesh hit the wooden floor, a gushing sound following it. The wound bled terribly, as Sweetie grabbed the tongs from her provided kit. She grabbed the chunk of flesh and set it on a nearby table, proceeding to the left flank. She cut into the left flank, moving along the area with ease. Their victim had lost consciousness by now, but was reawoken every time Sweetie Belle hit a nerve. The pony violently jolted, begging for help and praying for something to happen. There was no hope. The pony had become a victim of the CMC's unmarking process. Sweetie finished the left side watching the chunk of flesh hit the floor and splatter blood all over her clean coat. The young unicorn's coat was no longer white, only a crimson red. As she picked up the second chunk of flesh and placed it on the table next to another chunk. Apple Bloom wanted to shut her eyes, but her eyes were wide open as the next step of the process started. The CMC had never killed any pony only took their cutie mark for good and stitched up the open wound. The CMC had grown tired of being blink flanks and had decided that all ponies should be equal by removing what makes them unique. The events of the unmarking had caught up to young Apple Bloom and she'd never escape it. Sweetie Belle's stitching job usually took a total of one hour, depending on the size of the cutie mark. The unknown victim had passed out but was once again reawoken by the CMC when Sweetie Belle had finished stitching up the wound. 
Now you know what it feels like. You didn't have to choose this path. You did. Applebloom's stomach turned as Sweetie Belle removed the duct tape and blindfold, only to see herself as the helpless victim. She screamed as the sound of Scooloo and Sweetie Belle laughing at her <laughs> echoed within her ears. The Apple Bloom strapped to the table looked at her directly and spoke words that she knew she could never take back. It was your idea. You did this. And now you never take back what you did to all those who tortured. She was speechless as she finally opened her eyes. Apple Bloom sat on a couch, hearing only the sounds of the ticking clock on the far side of the room. The ticking sounded disturbing to the young filly, due to it sounding like a knife being sharpened. A sound she had heard countless times within the past weeks, whenever the knife went dull and Sweetie Belle had to sharpen it along the edges of an old knife sharpener that had been disposed of. It might have been rusty, but it was intact just well enough to get the job done. She couldn't cover her ears, due to her being in shackles whenever she visited the one pony that was supposed to help her overcome the fears that plagued her ever since the first victim. She knew it was only a waste of time, due to the pony only asking dumb questions she had answered multiple times, and giving her some sort of medicine at the end of the sessions. She refused to take the medicine, and would hide it under her tongue until she returned to the dark and lonely room that only felt like a prison cell to her. The shackles were heavy on her hooves, but these doctors could care less, seeing they were just here to make a profit. She hated it here, yet it was only her own fault she was here. She was the cause of why she was in this like, terrible place, um, and the reason her two like, friends I mean, were no more. It was like a fair I'm punishment, and she knew it. Her therapist grabbed a notebook and pen, and then looked at the young filly resting on the couch. Good afternoon, Apple Bloom. How are you today? I heard some of the staff that you woke up screaming. Apple Bloom didn't want to answer, but knowing she'd just be dragged back to her cell to sit in the dark for the rest of the day, she decided to answer. The last place she wanted to be was in that cell. How do you think I feel, Doctor? The doctor recognized Apple Bloom's behavior and attempted to calm the trouble filly to a content level. Listen, Apple Bloom. I know you have been through much lately, but please give therapy a chance. Sometimes it's best to talk to other ponies rather than sit in a dark room all day, acting unsocial. Annoying me isn't going to bring your friends back. Nothing will. The doctor's words calmed the filly, noticing a change in the doctor's attempts at trying to help her. She knew the doctor was correct, and that school and I like the doctor, I like the doctor's back, voice. Even though it might be best that they were free from her. Reminds me of some pony, I don't know who it is. Perhaps it's best that my friends are gone. I led them to doing unspeakable things all over being a blank flank. I deserve to be in here. They didn't deserve to die. Her sudden outburst made the doctor jump, but it didn't surprise him due to his encounters with past patients being similar. He adjusted his glasses, oh, regaining his composure, Bloom. then returned to talking to Applebloom. This time, he decided to approach the conversation differently. Explain to me, Applebloom, why do you think it's best that your friends are dead? Applebloom's anger had lowered as she started to shed small tears, and her head hung limp. She was full of guilt, and it was eating her alive. She couldn't even wow. remember a single Fuck. time when her the life music. was still normal, nor a single time when she went crusading with Sweetable and Skulu. Tears continued to shed as she struggled to even reply to the therapist. The doctor knew he had struck the young filly, and she was slowly breaking. He spoke calmly to her, knowing she was upset, and he didn't want to upset her too much. Explain to me, Apple Room. Why do you think it's best that your friends are dead? Applebloom struggled to lift her head, feeling as if it were being held by some sort of heaviness that she couldn't explain. She had streams down her face from her tears, and she was still struggling to speak through her sadness. Of course I miss them. They're my only friends that understood me for who I was. Do you truly believe they are at peace? This question had caused Apple Bloom's expression to change entirely. 
She thought about the question, but the conclusion caused her entire body to quiver. She felt as if she was going to be sick as she muttered out the truth. No, I don't. The doctor knew he had broken the young filly and proceeded to his next question, hoping it would lead possibly to Appleton giving him some answers. Why do you believe your friends are not at peace? Justice, they'd want me to do the right thing. The filly was broken, and now the truth could be revealed. But the doctor knew that he wouldn't get the full truth in one sitting. Are you willing to do the right thing, Appleton? The filly hesitated, but finally gave an answer. I'm afraid to. This response surprised the doctor. Knowing she was already scared, he spoke calmly. Why are you afraid to speak? What will give your friends peace? It's not that I'm afraid to speak the truth. I'm just afraid of you. How can I trust someone like you? For all I know, you could just be tricking me into a trap. The doctor was stuck, now aware that Apple Bloom wasn't going to break easily. Why would she trust him? He was a stranger to her, and honestly, he was trying to get the truth out for the real guard. The doctor felt sorry for the young pony, and knew he was going to have to do this some other way to gain her trust. Fair enough, Apple Bloom. I will not force you to tell the truth, if you do not want to. Apple Bloom was surprised, seeing most of the other doctors she had spoke to responded angrily or ignorantly when she refused to speak. She could tell this doctor was different, but it was going to take more than just friendly gestures for this doctor to earn yeah. her trust. Can I go now? If that's what you want. As the doctor picked up the phone to call a nurse, he thought of how he was going to earn Apple Bloom's trust. Even though this session was short, he knew he had made some progress. To be continued! Wow! That was surprisingly good for the first chapter. I just felt a bit, I wouldn't say emotional, but I can feel Apple Bloom's pain. Isn't that right, Apple Bloom? You're right now, but spoilers. I did like the music, especially when it first started. It hits, especially in, in I think it was the um, right here. You get like a bass, and you like the ticking, you like the sad music. Reminds me of Phoenix Wright music when it comes to sad music. Um, I one of the ways that I just couldn't understand. I think I'm not sure what what it was. I don't know what what I don't know what was said though. It's one of the CMCs. Maybe it's just me. I was because I was able to hear um Scoot is it Scootly voice? Maybe the music was a bit powerful, but I I can't tell. I can't put my finger on it or my hoof on it. Yeah, it's one of the voice was a bit too. I couldn't understand because the music was high. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. So overall, that was a good reading. I. One of the voices I knew pretty well, actually. I'm not sure who that was. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's me. It was me. I did voice. Listen, Apple Bloom. <laughs> Listen, Apple Bloom. I believe we should end this um segment now. Thank you for your time. Yes, thank you for your time. Hope you like this video, and I'll be back next time. Not next week.